The air was thick with the smell of pine and the sound of buzzing saws as the wealthy lumber baron, Marcus Blackwood, strode through the forest, surveying the land. He had set his sights on this woodland, determined to clear-cut every tree and turn a massive profit. Blackwood was known for his ruthless business tactics, and he would stop at nothing to increase his wealth. As his workers began felling trees, a strange feeling crept over Blackwood. He dismissed it as the stress of the job and continued to push his team harder, eager to extract every last penny from the forest. However, as the days wore on, the feeling grew stronger until it became impossible to ignore. One night, while Blackwood was sleeping in his tent, he was awoken by a loud crashing sound. He jumped to his feet, grabbed his rifle, and ventured out into the darkness. What he saw made his blood run cold. The trees, which had once stood tall and proud, were now twisted and gnarled, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. A thick fog had descended, obscuring everything beyond a few feet. Blackwood could hear whispers on the wind, the faint sound of laughter, and it seemed as though the very ground was shaking beneath his feet. Suddenly, the ground gave way, and Blackwood found himself tumbling down a steep slope. When he finally came to a stop, he was in a small clearing, surrounded by ancient trees. As he got to his feet, he noticed a strange symbol carved into one of the tree trunks. It was a circle with a star inside, and he couldn't shake the feeling that he had seen it somewhere before. The sound of footsteps approaching made Blackwood spin around, his rifle at the ready. However, what he saw made him lower his weapon in surprise. A figure had emerged from the fog, and it was unlike anything he had ever seen. It was a creature of sorts, with a body made of bark and leaves, and glowing eyes that seemed to pierce his very soul. You dare to defile this forest? The creature's voice boomed, and Blackwood realized that it was the source of the strange feeling he had experienced since setting foot in the woods. Who are you? Blackwood demanded, his fear turning to anger. I am the spirit of this forest, the creature replied, and I curse you and your fortune. You will never know peace or happiness until you have righted the wrongs you have done to this land. With those words, the creature vanished, leaving Blackwood alone in the clearing. Over the next few weeks, Blackwood's luck took a turn for the worse. His workers began to fall ill, and accidents plagued the lumber camp. The machinery malfunctioned, and the timber was of poor quality. Blackwood became increasingly desperate, knowing that his fortune was slipping away. Finally, in a fit of desperation, he sought out a local shaman, hoping to break the curse. The shaman listened to his tale and told him that the only way to appease the spirit was to plant new trees and to leave the forest untouched for several years. Blackwood knew that he had no choice but to follow the shaman's advice. He hired a team of workers to plant saplings and to tend to the forest, and he invested his remaining fortune into the project. For years, he watched as the trees grew and thrived, and he could feel the curse lifting. One day, as he walked through the woods, he came across the same symbol he had seen years ago. However, this time it was etched into a living tree, and he realized that it was a sign of the Spirit's forgiveness. With tears in his eyes, Blackwood knew that he had been given a second chance. He continued to invest in the forest, building sustainable and eco-friendly industries that benefited the land and the local community. Years passed, and Blackwood became known as a philanthropist and a champion of the environment. He dedicated his life to protecting the forest and ensuring that future generations would be able to enjoy it as he had. As he lay on his deathbed, surrounded by his family, Blackwood knew that he had made amends for his past mistakes. The spirit of the forest had given him a chance to redeem himself, and he had taken it with both hands. In the end, it wasn't his fortune that defined him, but the legacy he had created. A legacy that would live on long after he was gone, a testament to the power of redemption and the resilience of nature. <laughs>